everybody, Philip Campbell here, and today we are going to talk about the interesting subject of phantom islands. What is a phantom island? A, a phantom island is a, uh, an island that showed up on um, maps in the past, but subsequently over time uh, the island was removed because it was proven not to exist or that there wasn't sufficient evidence for its existence. And there's many reasons why uh, we have phantom islands. Sometimes they just come from myth or, or, uh, or legend, like Atlantis, uh, for example, the sunken island of Atlantis. Other times they're based on geographical miscalculation where one landmass is mistaken for another landmass. Uh, sometimes a phantom island is recorded because, um, because uh, sailors uh, in the old days mistook something for uh, something else like a like a mass of clouds uh, on the horizon could sometimes be mistaken for an island and this could lead to rumors that there was a certain landmass in a region and then over time this landmass gets a name and shows up on maps. So there's various reasons why phantom islands have, have showed up throughout history. Um, in this little lecture I want to go over five of the, the most interesting and probably uh, popular consistent uh, phantom islands throughout history. So we'll go through, I have them here on the board. We're going to go through each one separately. First is St. Brendan's Isle. Now uh, St. Brendan of course was a Irish monk who was famous for his transatlantic voyage uh, around the year 512 AD. He and a group of monks left their monastery in Clonfort and went out seeking the the holy land of the saints as it says in the life of St. Brendan. Now, according to the, the life of St. Brendan, they came to an island uh, after, after, uh, after going several weeks across the Atlantic. Uh, they stayed on this island for 15 days. They celebrated mass. It was a verdant land full of uh, lush fruits, vegetation, very habitable for humans. Um, after they'd celebrated mass and stayed for a few weeks, Brendan returned. Now, there's been much speculation about whether this could have actually been, uh, been Newfoundland. Of course, the Vikings would later come across and land in Newfoundland, uh, which they called Vinland uh, because of its wild grapes. So uh, people wondered whether St. Brendan had landed in a real location. Um, the, the life of St. Brendan, the document, is a very dubious uh, historical accuracy in all its particulars. It's, it's probably based on a lot of oral tradition handed down from the time of Brendan. So for a long time there was, uh, there was efforts to find Brendan's Isles. According to medieval, uh, medieval consensus, Brendan's Isles, Brendan's Isle was somewhere west of the Canary Islands and it was visible from the Canary Islands on a clear day, although it was often obscured by fog. Uh, Christopher Columbus believed in the existence of St. Brendan's Isle. Uh, and uh, as late as the 1500s and the 1600s, people were still claiming to have sightings of Brendan's Isle from the Canary Islands. On a clear day, they might see some what looked like a landmass out in the distance. There were expeditions as late as the 1700s going out trying to find Brendan's Isle. Eventually, it was, it was pretty much conclusively demonstrated that it was not real. Another interesting... Uh, island from uh, Irish legend is High Brazil. Hi, Bra oh, hi, Brazil. Um, despite the similarity to the country Brazil, there's the, the, the words are different. This Brasil comes from an Irish word. I can't remember which one. Brazil, uh, the, the, uh, the country comes from a, a different word. Uh, but Hi Brazil was some sort of uh, island that was supposed to be out there in the Western Sea, west of Ireland. It was a, a mystical sort of island. It was said to be only visible one day out of every seven years. It first appears on maps in 1385 and continuously is a regular feature of Atlantic maps until 1572, although it still appears uh, on a map as late as 1865, at which time the name is changed to Brazil Rock and its size is reduced to just basically some sort of uh, rock in the, the North Atlantic. So High Brasil was a very sort of mythical, mystical island. Um, many of the early explorers of the Portuguese era were, when they went west to discover the Azores and the Canary Islands, they were hoping to find High Brasil. Another um, island that comes from kind of legend is Antilia. 
Now, Antilia comes from Visigothic legend. Uh, of course, around 711 AD, the Moors overran Spain and put an end to the Christian Visigothic kingdom. Now, according to legend, seven Visigothic Christian bishops and their flocks took to the sea and fled west to an island called Antilia, where they uh, set up a, a Christian kingdom with seven different cities under the seven bishops. Uh, Antilia appears on late medieval maps as a rectangle. It's always easy to find because it's a, a simple rectangle. In fact, let's look at a, a picture of Antilia on a map right now. Okay, so you see what I mean. It's, it's very characteristically uh, rectangular. Um, this might be the origin of the, the, the seven cities of Cibola myth that some of the early explorers in North America were looking for, these seven golden cities, because Antilia was supposed to be home to seven wealthy cities, sometimes also called the seven cities of gold. Antilia disappeared from maps after 1492 when it became clear there was nothing out in that uh, location, but this did give its name to the, uh, the Antilles in the, uh, in the Caribbean. Now, another, um, another uh, phantom island is Friesland. Uh, Friesland was popularized by the 16th century English, um, English voyager Martin Frobisher. Now, Friesland was believed to be somewhere uh, in the vicinity off the coast of Greenland. Now, Friesland was not based on myth. It was based on a kind of geographical miscalculation. Um, the... The, the mid, early medievals had known about Greenland. The Vikings had colonized it in the 10th century, but um, Viking settlements on Greenland had gone extinct by the 1400s, and by the 16th century, um, knowledge of Greenland in, in, uh, in the minds of average Europeans had, had faded. When, when Martin Frobisher sailed past Greenland on his first voyage, he thought it was a new, uh, a new country. Now, the way uh, that we get this island of Friesland is Martin Frobisher on his voyages seems to have misidentified um, Baffin Island in Canada as, as Greenland. Um, going by ancient uh, records, thinking Baffin Island is Greenland. Now, if Baffin Island was Greenland, that when he actually sailed past the west coast of Greenland, uh, this was something different. And he named, he named the coast of Greenland Friesland. Now, later... Um, Later, uh, once the, the, the charts were amended and people understood where Greenland really was, uh, because he had given another name to Greenland, this led to the assumption that there was another island called Friesland out there somewhere off the coast of Greenland, that Friesland was somehow different from Greenland. And this, uh, this actually appeared on maps for a few centuries, as did another phantom island uh, discovered by Martin Frobisher, which was Bus Island. Now, Bus Island is interesting because out of all these islands, Bus Island is something that uh, that it was a physical place that Frobisher actually discovered. On his way back from, uh, from one of his voyages, I think his second voyage, somewhere off the coast of Greenland, his ship skirted along the northern coast of an actual island, uh, and they, they sailed along it for a few days. They, they left vivid descriptions and records of what the island was, and they named it Bus Island, and then they, they moved on. Now, uh, subsequent voyages searched for Bus Island. Nobody has ever found Bus Island. Um, it, uh, it continued to appear on maps into the 1800s. Eventually, when it became clear there was nothing there, it was called the Sunken Land of Bus. But the real question is, what did Frobisher find out there? Because he did find something the the explanation is that they got they got turned around in the uh, turned around in the North Atlantic somewhere and that he lost his bearing and through uh, a miscalculation due to some weather conditions he was actually skirting along again part of a uh, uh, part of Greenland on the other coast uh, other than the one that he thought was Friesland and that he had misidentified this coast of Greenland for a new island and that he thought he was. Uh, heading a certain direction in the fog, but in reality he was he was going somewhere else. So you can see there's all these different reasons why we have uh, phantom islands. And part of me, I don't know, I, Google Earth kind of ruins everything. Now we can now we can look into every obscure corner of the planet. I kind of uh, am nostalgic for an idea that that we live in a time where there could be islands out there anywhere, and and who knows 
where they're at. But uh, at any rate, there's many, many more phantom islands. If you go on Wikipedia, there's a huge list of them. They're really interesting to learn about. So I hope this has been interesting for you. I'm Mr. Campbell, and uh, hope you come on back for more episodes of Mr. Campbell Explains. Thank you.